if it's in here. Praise Him. Are you ready this morning? Hallelujah. Lord, we love you today. Lord, we honor you. We thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to stand in your presence, Lord. Lord, to worship you, Lord God. Lord, to honor you, Lord God, just for your goodness and for your grace. Father God, we thank you for everyone that's standing here today, Lord God. Lord, I pray your favor over their lives right now, Father God. Lord, for the leader of this sanctuary, Father God, we pray for his strength right now, Father God. We pray for peace, Lord God. Lord, none of him but all of you, Lord God. Lord, move in this service in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all don't have to get quiet on us this morning. How many of you came ready to receive what he has for you this morning? If we come with an open heart, an open expectation, he's going to give you what you stand in need of this morning. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. If you came seeking after him, you came saying, God, I'm ready to know more of you. I'm ready to feel more of you. He's ready to give it to you this morning. Just begin to worship him. It doesn't matter if the song's playing, if we're singing. Your worship is between you and him. So just begin to lift your hands. Begin to tell him how much you love him this morning. Begin to tell him how much he means to you. How worthy he is. How holy he is. Father, we thank you. You are holy. You're holy. Sing to him. Sing your worship. doing a fast okay some of you have been playing with it I understand the next seven days the next seven days I want you to drill in like you have never drilled in before now I'm not telling you if you got things you got to take sick and don't be silly but you know what you can do and you know what God and let me say this there's some of you been toying with this fast you haven't took it serious I need you to drill in the next seven days it's going to change your life and I also challenge you, I felt led to do this, Wednesday night is a night of impartation, worship, prayer, and we're having communion. And we're going to help you. Because I believe by Wednesday, some of you got, you're going to be, you're going you're gonna to need some, you're going to need some motivation. Amen. But I want you to drill in. How many of you got things going on in your life right now you need some help with? Drill into it. Do not let up. Do not hold back. Drill into it. I'm telling you right now, you're going to set the pace. Then you, you pray to God this week. God, what should, I, I'm fasting, I'm praying, and I'm sowing. What should I do this week? And then you be obedient to God. And don't let your a bank account, don't let your circumstances, don't let relationships get in the way. This is your week. Come Wednesday night. We're going to have, we're going to have, it starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have worship, prayer, and impartation, and communion. And I'm telling you, 
I, I believe it's needed. If you need a touch from heaven, you need to be healed, whatever it may be, you get here, you get here, and you make sure that you don't miss it Wednesday night. Today's going to be really good. Um, I also want to, I want to say this too. You know, come back tonight. Be a part of it. I know there's big football games on this evening. You come back. I promise you we'll get our worship on, our praise on, and you're, probably your team would probably win if you'd show up for church one night. Maybe. I don't know. I'll throw, a, I'll throw one up to God for you. Your, your, I, I could care less. You know, and, you know, and today after the end of the service, is okay if I announce this, Linda? Is it okay? At the end of the service today, it's immediately following, we're going to take a 10-minute break. We're going to come in, and uh, Linda and Roland are renewing their vows here. So you can be a part of that if you want. Amen. And we would love to have you be a part of that. Because it's awesome, you know, what the enemy, you know, heard Pastor Chris say it. You know, what the enemy tried to destroy, how many marriages, how many things he tried to destroy, he lost. And I love what he said. He'd been, he'd been preaching to me all week. I'm going to tell you, he went about a week without calling me. And, I, and this week he's been preaching to me all week. He's talking about Joel in chapter 2, about what the canker worm and all that kind of stuff. And about what the enemy tried to steal, how God is going to restore all that to us. Isn't that amazing how God is going to restore us all this stuff? Amen. And all the joy and the things we're going through in our life. And maybe you frowned and maybe you had some tough times in your life. But how many of you know today is a better day? Amen. Today is a great day. You know, isn't it beautiful to know that the sun, for, for finally, thank you, Lord, the sun is shining on a Sunday here. Amen. Man, that, that excited me. But I want to talk to you today about knowing God intimately. And I put that in knowing Him intimately, knowing Jesus intimately. I think you're going to get a lot, of that, a lot of about this. During this fast, I've been talking about salvation. I've been talking about the benefits of salvation. Now I'm going to talk to you about knowing God intimately. And I truly believe that the, one of the problems with the church today is that we don't have an intimate relationship with God. And, and we've been teaching the men and the women about marriage, about how to treat women, how to treat men, how to love one another. And I think one of the reasons, I'm going to tell you this, I, I know this for a fact. One of the reasons you cannot be intimately, you, you're not intimate with your spouse is because you haven't got intimate with God. And you got to get intimate with Jesus, amen. And when you start getting intimate with Jesus, amen, then you'll know how to love somebody the way he loves us. Does that make sense? I don't guess you heard that. You'll know how to love somebody the way Jesus loves us, amen. And you'll cherish them. And we'll see, we won't see these broken things get broken up all the time anymore. So I want you to know this, that God saved you for the purpose of enjoying an intimate relationship with him from now on, okay? So God saved me so that I could have an intimate relationship with him from now on. Now, I think what's happened in the church is that we've skewed this a little bit, that we that that we we just we get saved and we get born again. You know, the church says, all right, repeat after me. You know, you've got it, and then, and then you go on your way. But I want to talk to you today about an intimate relationship with God. I'm talking about praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about worshiping. Worshiping is not having your favorite... I, Listen, I, I would love them to play my favorite song every Sunday, but it's not about that. It's about worship, you understand? So it's about, it's about getting intimate with Him. It's about getting in, 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 in prayer with Him. It's about fasting and about trusting Him. Salvation, and I want you to get this, is not just, and you, you can write this down if you, got, you take notes, salvation is not just insurance from going to hell. Say amen. Because that's what y'all were taught, that's what I was taught, Salvation was insurance of not how, uh, not to go to hell. Now, then you go live like hell, and your life's like hell the whole your whole life. But you know, thank God, I ain't going to hell. But how many of y'all know that we got to walk on this planet for 120 years? All right. Now I know that the the, the NW, uh, not I mean the what's the what's the adult the AAA what's the adult uh, AARP has told you you got to die at 75, right? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> they. But how many of y'all know that the Bible says that we have 120 years? You know what? When you got an intimate relationship with God and you can love Him, then I guarantee you that you'll start loving. You, you, you'll love your life, and you'll and, I, and if you're gonna be here, you know why people die because they run out. They ain't got nothing to do. They don't have no intimate relationship with God. They get 72 years old, 75 years old, years old. They don't want to preach or teach anymore because they done gave up because the world has programmed them that hey. I'm going to have me a log cabin over in the corner of Glory Land, and, and I'm just going to check out of here. I don't know about you, but if God said I got 120 years, I think I'll just go ahead and take 120 years. Amen? So salvation is not just insurance from going to hell and then go live any way you want to. Neither does God intend that you receive forgiveness for your sins and, and just merely survive till you get to heaven. So God doesn't want your sins to be forgiven, 
and then you just survive this earth. God wants us to have an abundant life. He wants us to have a prayer life. He wants us to have a worship life. He wants us to have wonderful wives and wonderful husbands and wonderful financial situations. He wants us to have the best kids. But you know what we do? We just stroll through life. We tread water, and we survive. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. I don't like being, I don't want to, did you hear about that guy that fell off the cruise ship last week? I don't know about y'all, but I, I, I'm not interested in being out in the middle of the ocean by myself. Any of y'all? Because nobody could even see him. Thank God it was a mercy. God, you know, Disney, man, Disney's cool. Disney ship come by and they say, hey, there, there's a guy in the water. And they, they plucked him out. But you know what? I don't want to just tread water. You understand? You know, and I think that's what we do with our, I know this is what we do in our relationship with Christ. We do it in our marriages. We do it with our children. We just tread water and we survive till we die. You know, we all we all got 401Ks. We all got plans to retire. Some of y'all done plan, bought you, 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 some of y'all done bought you your grave site. Boy, you, you, I'm going to tell you that, not me. I, I think I can think of a, a trip to Cancun would be a whole lot better than buying that. That would be for somebody else to worry about. Stick me up by a tree out there and let the birds come because I'll be gone. Amen. But you've got to develop an intimate relationship with God. And I want you to understand this, and you've got to get this because young people think this. It's just insurance, man. You know, because they, you know, preachers say, "Hey, if you die now, where are you going to go?" I'm going to heaven. Okay, well, great. What about the next 80 years? Tell, how do I feel in the next 80 years? Because I'm going to tell you, what we were taught didn't work, amen. Because what happened is we got back out. We got back. We didn't. We, could, we didn't. Couldn't find that intimate place with God. He wants that intimacy with us, and we've got to respond to it. How do we do it? We communicate Him. Is God a spirit? And how how has He got to be worshipped? You can't worship God in the flesh. You cannot worship God uh, uh, with just showing up. People think they need to show up for church or show up for a prayer service or show up for a singing or something like that, and it's going to happen. You've got to worship God. And the only way you can communicate and have an intimate relationship with God, amen, is through, through, through the Spirit, right? So we know that salvation is so much more, right? Say yes. Put John 3.16. Any of y'all ever heard John 3.16? Wouldn't y'all probably say that that was the most... Besides, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is probably the most famous scripture in the Bible, wouldn't you think? Because I'm not good at remembering. I can go find any scripture and I can find anything. But I'm not good at quoting scripture. But I can quote John 3.16. Right, Doug? I can do it, you know. But I, when I was studying this out, I, missed, I, I seen something in here. How many, love, how many love studying the Word of God? How many love... And I, my, 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 my Bible college class, they're all mad at me because I give the wrong, they say I give the wrong notes here tonight. But how many know that I still love you, right? Y'all can't believe I would get off kilter, could you? Amen. But you know what? In doing that the other night and studying that out and, and going through what we did, it was a press to get through it. I read this verse and I thought, oh, my God, I've seen something different. I've seen what, where, where, where the church is and what we left out. And, God, and Jesus meant for this to us to take this the way that it's written. And I'm going to show you where the church does. So watch this. For God so loved the world, right? Comma. Everybody say comma. That he gave his only begotten son. Everybody say comma. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish. Well, you know what the church has done? They put a period right there. Well, I stop. Here's where the church is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, period. That's where they put it, right there, right? That's what we were taught. Thank God I'm going to heaven. I got me. I'm going to run on the streets of gold. I'm going to kick my feet up, and I'm going to touch the walls of Jasper. Praise God. I'm going to walk the streets of gold here. I'm going to touch the walls of Jasper here. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to preach the gospel. Amen. I'm going to sing and shout while I'm here and not wait till I get there. But here's what it is. But, everybody say but. There's a common there. But have what? What? That means life right here on earth, somebody. Amen. Have everlasting life. Enjoying life, right? And this is life. Here, here's what it is. John 17, 3 says this. It goes right along. Once you see this, okay? John 17, 3. <clears throat> and, this, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Salvation is getting to know this awesome, wonderful God for the rest of eternity. So here's the problem. We get born again. Nobody te People are going to show up into heaven not even know who God is. People are going to show up in heaven 
not even know who Jesus is. But if you've got an intimate relationship with somebody, you should know who they are, right? Amen. People are going to, church folks are going to show up in heaven, and, and they're going to go run to Peter and say, hey, Jesus, I worship you. Peter's going to say, hey, Jesus. They're going to run over to the, they're going to run over to the apostle Elijah, and they say, Jesus, it must be you. And I'm not, my God, let me tell you what. See, because me and him have got a kindred spirit. And because he lives inside of me, I'm not going to have to go, go say, Peter, where is Jesus? I'm going to know where he is because, hey, Pastor Stacy, I come in. I was, you heard y'all been in Hartsville Airport, and people are coming up the stairs. And you, she was there to pick me up when I came back from the Congo. She, and, and thank God she picked me up. But I'm, I'm going through thousands of people, thousands of people, right? And, and I'm coming up. I don't know where she, exactly where she was. But I'm going to tell you, because we have an intimate relationship with one another, immediately when I come around the corner, I seen her and she seen me. There were thousands of other people around. She couldn't, she just said, where is he? Is that him? Is that him? She knew who I was. And I knew who she was. And we zeroed. I didn't look at nobody else. I zeroed in right there. You see what I'm saying? Same thing with, with the Lord. If we go through life and we don't have an intimate relationship with him, we're not going to know him when we get there to see him. Does that make sense? You never heard that. No, that's fine. I don't care if you like it or not. <clears throat> Jesus came to give us, me and you, eternal life. And, and most people have the idea that being born again is merely fire insurance, right? So most people have the idea that being born again is, oh, I'm saying. Well, guess what? If you don't have an in relationship with Jesus Christ and you're not learning, teaching, on fire, amen, worshiping, praying, and fasting, and doing things like this, you're not going to know who he is, amen? And you're not going to be able to enjoy the, the life that Christ has prepared for you. So many people miss their destinies because they don't really know who Jesus is. I told the Bible college students the other night, most people in church today really don't believe there is a Jesus. If we were all honest with one another, and they were honest, they really don't believe it. They just do it for a form of formality because they're expected to do it. You know how I know most of them don't really believe it? Because they don't live it, they don't worship, they don't pray, they don't believe the, the, the acts of the apostles, they don't even believe what Jesus said, amen? So I know good and well they really don't have an end of a relationship with Jesus. They really don't believe it. And when you say, you can't say that, oh, I can. And I want to tell you something. I want you to understand this. You've seen what's happened the last two weeks with Islam and, and the Islamic people and, and people rising up. And I'm going to tell you, I remember, how many of y'all were here when the rabbi was here? Any of y'all remember? Any of y'all left? You remember what he told you? He said, they're going to tell you in the years coming that there's peaceful Islamic people. If they truly are believe, this is what he said now, what their Quran says, then they hate us. Do you see what is taking place in the world? Do you understand why? Because the church in the world today is trying to fight a, a, watch this, a spiritual battle with tanks and guns. Can I tell you that the devil will whip us every single time with tanks and guns? But watch this. What he cannot handle is an intimate church that is on fire for the Lord, amen, that is focused and living for Christ, amen. America is afraid. The church of, you know what the devil is? He says, boo, we all run away. Two guys go shoot up somewhere over there, and we all freak out all over the world. Let me tell you something, amen. I'd go to Paris, I'd go to that place, and I don't agree with what they do over there, but I trust God. You cannot win a battle with tanks and guns. Not a spiritual battle. This, this goes back, some of you Bible scholars know it, this goes back to Ishmael, and this goes back... Uh, to the old days when Hagar and Ishmael went out into the battle and God said they'd be a great nation, but we have power over them through the spirit and power of God. Amen? You believe that? So, but here's what happened. The reason people got in this position where they believe born again is being just fire insurance, it came from the church putting a period where the, where the Bible has a comma. You know, it's not for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, period. Right? Is it not? But have what? Everlasting life. So why don't we walk in fear? Why don't we tolerate the things we do? We can rise up spiritually as a church. When was the last time these great spiritual leaders that are trying to help America got up praying the Holy Ghost on TV? 
I ain't heard of one. They'll do it on their TV shows, but they won't do it when they're out in public with other people. Let me tell you something. Put me on a podium. I'll pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'll cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. And we got to get to that point where we're that way all the time. Every one of us, right? Amen. So what happens is many of us, ministers and teachers, they stop there. Here's what happens. We talk about salvation. We, I guarantee you in churches of America, pastors, teachers today, they spend most of their time teaching people about the byproduct of salvation, which is, which is a great byproduct. But nobody, somebody tell me how i got to live on this earth. Somebody tell me, hey, what, what can I do to get closer to God? Hey, Amen. How can I get closer to my spouse? How can I get closer on my job? Have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody, they say, well, God loves you so much, you know, he forgives you. But how, how many of you have, have pastors or teachers said, how, how deeply do you love God? How deeply do you love Jesus? How many times do you, do, you, do, you, do you speak with him and pray with him and get intimate with him during the week? If you don't have an intimate relationship with you, you say, well, that's gross. Hey, you better get gross or you ain't going to live this life the way it should. Amen. You better, oh, that's gross. Yeah, you know it's gross because you're thinking of this in your carnal mind. You people got to get in a spiritual mindset and get out of this carnal and we'll start seeing people get up out of wheelchairs. We'll start seeing the dead people getting raised. I'm going I'm to tell you, so there was a guy here the other day. Last Sunday, that was handicapped in some way. I don't want to stereotype it. God said, I want to heal him. And I was like, well, do your thing. He said, ain't no power in the house. They don't believe. They, they, don't, they think you're just praying. The boy, he knew it. He said, I feel heat. I said, you need to feel fire. All of a sudden, he rolled over. Amen. But when we can get out of the carnal... Quit worrying about who you are, what you got to do for lunch, what you got to do this afternoon. And, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm 14 days in this consecration. I'm on fire. I ain't had a hamburger in two weeks, man. And I told her I may never pick them up again. And this week, I'm going to really grind in. I ain't going to tell you. I'll tell you next week what I did. Amen, because I don't want to give the devil any, any points. Amen. But I'm going to get intimate with Jesus because getting intimate with Jesus, amen, is what saved my marriage, what saved my ministry, what saved my children, what has saved you and what has kept you in the place that you're at today. Getting to know Jesus and knowing who you are in Christ is what it's all about, is it not? Amen. So we know that many people are teaching to emphasize the byproduct of missing hell, but they totally ignore, they totally ignore God's main purpose, right? What is it? That we have everlasting life. Can I tell you why you were born again, why you were saved? Really why you were saved? Do you know why you were saved? To have an intimate relationship with Jesus. That's the reason you were saved. Not just to get escape hell's fire and brimstone. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good. But I want so I want to, I want to be able to carry this life. I want to be able to I want to be I want to be able to say Jesus loves me this I know. I was saved for an intimate relationship with God and to be intimate with his son Jesus Christ. Do you know why Jesus came? Why did Jesus come? Yeah, he did that, but why did he come? You know why he came? Why did Jesus ultimately come? Why did he come? Because he loved you. Why did he come? He didn't, did he come to strike down the Roman soldiers? Did he come to come out of the womb with a crown on his head, walk around with a baby stick, say, I'm the king of king and the Jews? No, you know what he did? He walked in this life. He learned, how, watch this, he learned how to intimately love God Amen. And he discovered who he was through the scriptures. Amen. And he seen the power of God. And he went 33 years old or whenever he started his ministry, amen, he began to operate in that intimacy that God had given him. Amen. You can do the same today. All right. He didn't become because he had to rescue just because he had to rescue all his wayward, his congregation or his creation, right? His motivation was pure love. And how many of you know, you know, if his motivation was pure love, and anyone who has ever loved has to be loved in return, right? Isn't that what you really want? If you get a dog that you want him to love you, you don't want him to bite you, do you? If you, got, if you get married, you don't want to fight all the time, do you? You want to be intimate with them, right? You want to love them, amen? You want to, you want to, you want to be loved in return, right? So I give, you know, I, I tell this all the time. You know, you love people, and sometimes they won't love you in return. Well, God said, well, how do you think I feel? I love the church. They're, let, they're letting Islamic jihadists all over the world run over this earth. When they, they, 
You know what? If somebody would just, if the church would just come together, love God, get intimate with Jesus, we could stop all of it. With, I mean, we just wave our hand today. All of us together praying in the Holy Ghost, getting one big revival today, we could stop it in its tracks right now. I believe that. Amen. Here's the great thing. God's compassion for us, and he loved us in our lost condition. His passion was to restore us to the fellowship of Jesus, right? And it was combined with pure love that endured the cross. Jesus loved us so much. And he died on the cross, not just that you would get to heaven, but he endured the pain of the cross. He endured the pain of ridicule. All these people making fun of Jesus, drawing characters of him, making Islamic people talking about how it's demonic and all this kind of stuff. He endured the cross for each and every one of them, and he loved us enough not just to go to heaven, but that we could be reconnected with him. Because we didn't have any relation with him. He came so he could reconnect that relationship with the Father. We could not get intimate with God till Jesus came and reconnected that intimacy. Isn't that awesome? Amen. So when he did that and he removed all the walls of sin forever. Everybody say they're all gone forever. He died how many times? And once and for all, right? He ain't going back again, right? He's done it once and for all. He died for your, your sins past. Present and future, right? Hallelujah. You may have been a seed. Hey, thank God. People today, nobody likes amazing grace, how sweet the sound. They don't even know what grace is anymore. Hey, I got faith. I got faith. Yes, I do. I got faith. How about you? Amen. Because you ain't going to get no grace, and you ain't going to get intimate with Jesus. Amen. Unless you got faith, because grace ain't going to drop till you operate in faith. Because you've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you can't do it, you're not going to see it. That's why people tell me all the time, I pray to God he didn't heal me. Well, that's a lie. God heals you every time. <laughs> oh, I pray to God he didn't save me. No, you didn't, you didn't believe that. What ruins, what ruins most people's intimacy? Unbelief, right? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit, not believing. I don't believe what you said, Bishop. I don't really care. I'm just, I know I'm, I'm going to heaven, so what? Well, guess what? Silly, you'll live your life all miserable on this earth. You may be lonely. There's, I would tell you, there's a lot of people who make it to heaven. They're very lonely in this earth. Because they don't know how to get into it. I'm going to tell you, you cannot meet your mate till you have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. A true relationship. No, you're talking about these fake relationships. There are a lot of people married that are fake. They got married for whatever reason. Some of them got pregnant. Some of them just want to say, what? It don't matter. That's fake. I'm talking about intimate. I didn't get what God, I didn't develop a relationship with God because I want to escape hell. I don't preach and, and get the ridicule and travel all over the earth, work 60 hours a week, amen, because it feels good. I do it because I've got an intimate relationship with God and intimate relationship with Jesus, amen, Then I want to share his love with everybody else so they can understand the love I feel and experience it and I can see them get peace in their life. That's why I do it. Because I'd quit a long time ago. I would just sit through life and say, I'm saved, Hallelujah. Me and my five are fine, and God bless you, because it would be a lot easier, right? Wouldn't it have been easier for Jesus to stay in heaven? It would have been. Think about this. The devil and his angels had already been kicked out, so heaven was a better place. It was. But he left his home, heavenly home, because he's the only one that could do it, because he, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, the whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, I'm saved. You want everlasting life? You want to enjoy your life here? You want to make an impact on the earth? You want to have, well, they talk about this, all, scientists talk about this all, all the time. I want to have a carbon impact in the earth. I want to put my feet everywhere God wants me to go. And I want to share his love and his intimacy with me everywhere. Because if you know who you are in Christ, then nothing else matters. Did you know that? Oh, you don't love me? Oh. Chris, you don't love me? I love you, man. Who cares? Because Jesus and me got this thing worked out. So, for God, he said I would have everlasting life. So you got to love me if you want to get to the place I'm at. Isn't that good? All right. And I'm still striving. Don't think I'm great. I'm, I'm, work, I'm a work in progress. Are y'all? <laughs> yeah. I'll sit here and tell you I ain't perfect. But when the walls of sin were removed forever, we was, we've been set free, Right? And when the sin walls were removed, we've been set free to receive his love. And guess what? And to love him in return. All right? And the relationship that Adam and Eve had with God, right? And they lost it, right? Amen? Remember, Eve was deceived by the devil. Then Adam disobeyed God. 
Adam wasn't deceived by the devil. He disobeyed God, and he gave up what we got today. God, thank you, Lord. They lost has now been restored to all of us. Look at Galatians 1 and 4. Are you getting anything out of this? Are you really discovering who you are? You understand what the fast is all about now? It's about loving him. It ain't about quitting food and not eating. I don't even know. Oh, I'm going to eat nuts. Who cares? I don't, I don't even care about that stuff. It's about you developing an intimate relationship with God. And if you're not going to develop one, you might as well quit, go eat your hamburgers, do your Facebook, go do what you, you were doing because you ain't doing a bit of good. And I'm going to tell you, if you play in with this thing, you're not being, and people play in their marriage, they play in their, their jobs and everything else. If you're not being true to this, just check out because you're hurting the whole body. Don't say, I'm, I'm fasting, Bishop. No, you ain't. Check out. Just be honest. Tell God you're checking out of it. You'll do it again next time. Because I want a body. I want a body. I want a church. Pastor Chris said it. He believes in restoration. He's believing in great things for our partnership. We're having a conference in Daytona Beach this summer, and I want everybody to go. Amen. You say, well, you may can't go to Africa. I bet you find a $69 hotel and come on down. Amen. It'll be Monday through Friday. You can come. You won't miss church. Nothing. Galatians 1 and 4 says, this is Jesus who gave himself for our sins. Watch this. That he might deliver us from what? Wait a minute. Whoa. What, does, that not, does that not go along with what I said? He didn't only die that we would, in the afterworld, right? When the trumpet sounds, right? He says that he might deliver us from this present evil world, right? According to the will of God in the Father. Do you believe that? Amen. So he, he didn't just come that we had fire insurance. He didn't just save us from a future evil, the, you know, like hell. He also delivered us from this pre present evil world. So the Islamic, the people that are coming against our earth, people that are breaking in our houses, people that are stealing from us, people that are talking about us and doing all this kind of stuff, he died for all of that. Amen. That he would, that he would deliver us from this present. Everybody say present. Present evil world. Here's a great thing. We're all now able to walk and talk with him, right? But here's the problem. What you should do during this fast is you should get to know God. You, 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 don't, you think God's this big thing with this white hair, red eye, whatever. You need to get to know him personally, where he speaks to you, where you feel him. You get intimately. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you start getting in a place, shot that robocoy. Where you, man, like the girl did right here while they go. The little, little girl, you know, she got up here. She started worshiping, man. She's a worshiper, man. You, th you think that she sat back there and said, hey, I think I'll just sit, you know, I think I'll just, you know, I, 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 I think I'll wait to get to heaven to do this. No, no. She come up here and said, I'm going to let it go now. I don't care who sees me. I don't care what it is. I'm going to get mine because I got to get through this earth. I'm a young teenage woman, amen. Every man in the world wants me, and I ain't gonna, I'm going to wait for, I'm gonna wait for uh, the right one. I'm going to love God so much that God ain't got no choice but to send me the very best man. If all you women and men would do that, you wouldn't have the jacked up mess you got right now. Ch Don't complain to me about child support because you did it, not me. <laughs> Somebody complained to me. I was like, well, that's your fault. Don't blame God. Well, I love Jesus, and he sent me. Now, nah, you went with the first thing that had two legs. It had, you know, I'm just be honest. You cannot, I'm telling you, I tell the story this all the time. I'm amazed. I didn't even understand none of this. I didn't understand none of this. Somehow I met her, met Pastor Stacy, and thank God her mother then said, well, that's good. I'm glad you like her. You're going to sit. You're going to wait. Right? If you love her, you're going to wait. What were we talking about? The guy with, uh, what was it, Jacob? And he had to wait on the other one. He wanted one, and he could And today, he's all excited. That's how oh, you get this one. Oh, he said, he said, well, I'll wait. And he waited all these years. Worked all, he finally got it right. You know, and that's the way I did. I waited. You know what I mean? All these other people come your way. You know what I mean? But I met her. And through, I, I, I began to know the intimate relationship through no, I got to know her. I got to love her. I got to spend time with her family. We didn't run off and hide and do all this other kind of stuff in those early years. We were obedient to God and her parents, amen. And we developed an intimate relationship that will carry you through the rough times and the good times. You see that? But today, y'all meet somebody one day, you're married two weeks later. There's no way you can know them, right? So... 
you got you you got to know Him first. And for anything to work in your life, and I know some of y'all, Doug White says this, oh, I'm going to be lonely the rest of my life. You better wait on God. Or you will be lonely. And you will be trying to find a way out. But I'm telling you, God has the right person. But till you marry Him and get, you can't just, I'm married to God. No. No, 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 no. You are the man, women, you are the bride, he is the groom, you better get to know it. Till that marriage, if you get, I'm telling you spiritually, don't get weird on me. Till you consummate that marriage, it ain't going to work. Amen. You've got to get to know him. I don't believe you, Bishop, you're crazy. Psalm 1611 says this. Here's the great thing. When you got an intimate relationship with your partner, your lover, Jesus, he says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The joys of it. To seeing somebody ride up and say thank you. To see somebody get restored. To see marriage vows get renewed. To see people get back to where they go. I'm going to tell you, if you love the Lord, and you, you both you and your partner are intimate with Jesus, there ain't nothing that will destroy your marriage. I'm telling you right now. Jesus Christ, look at 1 Peter 7 and 8. Did you get that? 1 Peter, that the trial of your faith, have you ever been tested in your faith? Okay, but it's more precious than, uh, than that of gold that perish. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love, and who, though now you see him, you see him not, Yet believe and you rejoice with joy unspeakable and, and, and full of glory. What does that mean? True joy and happiness in this life comes from intimacy with God. Nothing else. Oh, my kids. No. Huh? You, I tell people this, I tell the men this all the time. You cannot be a daddy until you get intimate with God. You will never be a daddy. Oh, I'm going to be their best friend. You ain't, no, you ain't got no intimate relationship with Jesus. I'll tell you that right now. I my my ain't mine my best friend. I'm gonna assure you that. I'm probably way down the list. I'm their dad. He's my dad. Amen. You see what I'm saying? He's my father. He is above all. I love him. You know, you remember the saying, remember I heard this. I remember Pastor told me this before I got married. He said, He said, He said, Love the Lord. He said, Love the Lord first, and then everything will be added into you. Well, that was a true statement. Amen. Get intimate with him first. On this earth. Don't wait till you get to heaven. Don't, and you know what, you know another time people wait? They wait till they get sick with cancer, or they get sick with problems, or the kid gets in a bad wreck, or the kids get on drugs. Then they want to get intimate with Jesus, amen? You can't do that. You've got to get intimate today. When you're fasting, when you're praying, when you're believing God for the miracle, you've got to get intimate with him, and then you can walk through your life. Problems come your way, you say, I love him. Lord, you got this. I cast every care upon you because you love me. Amen. No worries. I'm going to give it to you. So, True joy, true joy and happiness comes from Him. Knowing Him is what? Eternal life. It's eternal life. It's an abundant life on this earth. Amen. We have to become, amen, a disciple of Him. A disciple is a learner and, and somebody who follows another, right? John 8, 31 and 32 says this. If you continue in my word, if, everybody say what? If? If you continue in my word, It'll pop up in just a minute. You'll see it. That's John 8, 31, 32. All right? If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, right? Is that it? Okay, yeah. And you shall know the truth in what? And, and the truth shall set you free. So we got to learn what God's word says, and then we got to do what he instructs us. See, the problem is we never broke it down. Nobody's ever taught us. It, we just hear these things, but it's never broken down. If you take this message and you break that down, okay, if you, I got born again, Lord, December the 4th, 1975. Well, that's great. That's good. You got, you got fire insurance. What have you done since December the 4th of 75? If, everybody say if. If you continue in my work, everybody say if again. If you continue in my work, then you are disciples, right? So I'm a disciple of Christ, not unless you continued in his word. Some of y'all ain't picked up a Bible since the first day you read John 3.16. Some of you don't even have a clue what the Bible says. You know, it's like somebody said earlier, I think Miss Gwen said, she said, y'all say y'all on the Bible and you, you, you ain't no more on the Bible and you shake a stick at. 
Most people on Facebook use the Bible to misquote the Bible anyway to make it fit what they want it to fit. They twist. You know who else does that? Satan. Y'all ever heard of him? Lucifer. He takes a verse of the Bible. Remember when he, he brought, Jesus was led by the Spirit. Jesus wasn't led by the devil. Don't everybody tell you that. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Why? You know why? You know why? You know why? Everybody, you know why? You know why? Jager, you say, you know why? You want to know why? Why? Why was he led by the Spirit in the wilderness? Why? He wanted, he went there to pray. And why? Say why? He wanted to get intimate with God. So who shows up when you're trying to get intimate with God? And he struck. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. I ain't never told you this. He showed up trying to be God. He seen Jesus in a weakened state. He and ate. He was fasting, was he? Who showed up when you got on this fast? You may think it's God, but it may be the devil. He came trying to counterfeit it. And when he started quoting them scriptures, Jesus like, this ain't God. Can't be God. God wouldn't say that. God wouldn't take a scripture and misconstrue it and try to make me do something I know better to do because I know the word. So what happened? So when you're on this fast, the devil's going to show up just like he did with Jesus. Amen? But if you're led by the Spirit into the fast, you'll be led by the Spirit out of the fast. Right? You believe that? So you learned something there, didn't you? Hallelujah. You come to Bible college, I give stuff like that all the time. Amen. I got a lot of nuggets I could teach you, stuff you never heard, that nobody ever told you. I beg God, somebody, let me release that. He's like, no, I ain't ready for it. Right, Chris? Chris sitting there one day, his mouth dropped to her. <laughs> uh, so here's what we got to do. Learn what God's Word says. See, I just told you something. You probably never studied that. God, I've heard preachers preach. I've heard, I'm serious, young preachers. People here. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Lie, lie, lie. I've sent him in the office. I get mad at him. It's not what it says. Led by the Spirit. Amen. He was fasting. He was praying. Devil showed up, tried to imitate God. That's what he's going to do while you're in this fast. That's what he's going to do while you're in trouble. The enemy is going to show up as a counterfeit God to try to get you off kilter to go the wrong direction. Because he knew what Jesus... You know why? Do you know, everybody say, you know why? You want to know why? Because the devil, Lucifer, knew what was about to take place. All right, watch this. The devil knows what's about to take place at Living Way. He knows what's about to take place in your life. So, guess what? He's got to stop it. So he'll counterfeit himself. He'll be whatever you want him to be. He'll sure try to. You don't think he'll try to be God? Come on. Does every day. People with addictions, people with sickness, people with, Hey, it rules their life. He's their God. Learn what the God's Word says. Then you got to do. Somebody was talking about the other day. Uh, Liz had, was doing it, talking about the other day. Pastor Liz. Be a doer of the word. Do what it says. So I preached a message out at New Hope Baptist Church in Greer with Pat Bishop Bruton. Say what Jesus says. When people quiz you, give. Hey, have you, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I like I like Tyler Perry and his little Medea movies. Y'all remember when he was being interviewed by Doctor Phil, and he'd ask a question, she'd ask a question. That's what you got to do with the devil. Well, the, uh, God said he loves you. Yeah, he loves me, and, and, and he don't like you. You know what I mean? you got to give it back to him. Remember, Dr. Phil said, there ain't no hell. I want the devil to walk away from me going, there ain't no hell for him. Leave him alone because there ain't no convincing him. There ain't no changing him, amen? Dr. Phil can fix anybody. Couldn't fix Medea. I want the devil to say, I can't fix him. I can't have him. I want, I've want. i tried everything. I've took him out of his knees, took him out of his head. I want his kids, I want his wife. I want it this, I want it that. But guess what? I, he just won't break. Oh, are you better than us? Uh-uh, uh-uh. I just figured out something last year. If I'm intimate with him, he's got to do what he said he would do. Because hmm? he's going to protect his bride. Doug, you going to let somebody mess with Danielle while you're standing right there? Absolutely not. Huh? There's going to be some rockets going on, right? Amen. I would I'd knock some. I, I don't care if it's 20 people. I'd go down and fight. You know what I mean? Do you think that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, that he's going to let the devil mess with you long enough if you've got an intimate relationship with him? The problem is when you don't tap into that, he's over here going, I, I won't. You ever seen those pictures where things are going wrong and Jesus is standing over there like, I'm right here. 
I'm right here, but you don't you don't, you didn't call on me. You don't know me. How many you know you, you know I get on a lot of airplanes. I sure would want to have an intimate relationship with God when that plane starts to shake it. It starts dropping or turning. You know, used to I'd be freaking out, pray. I'd be shut up, blah, 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 blah. Some of them planes down there, people, they start, they weren't praying before, but when that turbulence starts, you start seeing them get real quiet and they start praying. You don't see them sucking down the liquor and sucking down the alcohol, they start doing something else. Amen? You don't wait till there's trouble in your life and then you shut it, 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 it. God don't honor that stuff. He's like, I don't, you know, what do you say? I, he said, depart from me, I don't even know you. Bring me that false junk. The devil can do that stuff. You don't have no relationship. That stuff don't work unless you got a relationship with him. If it's not backed up by the king, you know, how many of y'all got a dollar bill? You y'all got a piece of money? Give me a piece. Just give, I'll give it back to you. Give me a dollar or something. Anybody got a dollar, five dollar, whatever? hundred dollars, I'll keep that one. Just give me whatever. Borrow that right quick. This is a piece of paper. Is it not? But it's backed by the U.S. government in gold, right? This is a piece of paper. But it, it's really worth, it's worth something, is it not? Because it's got value behind it, right? Are you, are you with me? So if, if you put value, if you've got value behind it, I've got all of heaven behind me. You're praying in tongues, you're worship, you're singing in the Holy you whatever you say you're doing, and all this kind of fake stuff you do, amen. It ain't nothing unless it's backed up with the kingdom of God. This is a piece of green, white paper unless it's backed up. You take, take this over to Africa. They'll laugh at you. That thing ain't worth nothing. Get out of here. I'm serious. You got to go to a bank and beg mercy, and they'll give you 20 cents for this thing. Amen. Who went to Africa with me? Ask Joel. He'll tell you. Jerry, right? Jerry went in with about 600 bucks. He come out with 300. He's like, I think I got ripped off. Because they don't care. Well, this is back by the U.S. government. Who? You ain't keen, your brother. <laughs> you ain't in the U.S. But if I go to, hey, remember Skiva, Jew? Uh, what, oh, that's not yours. Praise the Lord. I, I was going to bless you with it, but that's all right. Praise the Lord. You should have took it. It's back by the U.S. government. Go buy you a Twinkie with it. <laughs> oh, shouldn't be. But watch this. Remember, all right, here's the thing. People all the time, they look at me, they say, oh, you ain't nothing, you ain't this, you ain't that, da 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 And they won't play with the Holy Ghost. That scheme of the Jew, the religious people, they were seeing all these miracles take place. They're going to take place here, I'm telling you right now. We've seen some, but we, we're fixing to see. Signs and wonders and miracles Follow them that believe. I believe. How about you? I, I want to tell you, pray for miracles. Believe God for the miracles because they're coming. We need people to get healed, right? We need people to get saved. We need there to be a big harvest. So what happened is he said, I'll go lay hands and do the same thing. devil jumped on them. You know why? He said, Peter I know. Paul I know. Jesus I know. Who are you? devil slapped. He he. You think God can pull out an imposter? The devil loves exposing imposters. The Bible says that the evil spirit leaped on him and all his buddies. And they all, last time we seen them, they were running naked through Jerusalem. Amen? And that's what he'll do. These, we got yo-yos. We got people. We, <laughs> oh, my God. I don't even want to say that. We got people who used to come here. Man, they, they gave stuff and they want it back. I should have said that. Uh, it's true, though. I'm like, are you serious? You don't serve the same God I serve. <laughs> Once you put it in heaven's bank, <laughs> listen, yeah, it's done. You ain't getting it back. I'm just telling you, amen. Your heart attitude should be this. Lord, I know you. You love me, and I love you, too. Everything I give to you, Lord, is yours. I love you, and I trust you enough that, God, you, 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 it's gonna be, I'm going to be blessed more than I can even think. Amen. And when you sow, you should expect a return. Just not on what you just gave, but the expectation of more. Right? I believe that. Don't you? You set the whole pace. Here's what it is. Show me what to do, and I'll do it. That's the attitude you got to have. God, show me in my spirit. He said, I want, you know, you got to say, I want to follow you. Lay, and here's the thing. I've done this. You start laying, if you've got a plan, you lay out everything in front of him, right? You, you start laying it all out in front of God. And, and I'm almost done. It's 10 after 12, I know. Lay everything out before him and make no reservations. All right? Recognize in, in your life that he is God and you're not. Well, that's good, isn't it? 
okay? So hold nothing back from him because he's already given you everything. He laid down his very life for me and you. So who am I to hold back? You understand? Pray harder than you've ever prayed. Do, do like the girl did. Do, do like she did. Come up here and, and, and pray in the Holy Ghost. Who cares what people say? You know, James had a little scare. Where's James at? A little thing with his heart this week right now. I just saw, you're healed, man. Ain't nothing wrong with your heart. You ain't got to go St. Mary, St. Joe, St. Peter, St. Paul. You ain't got to go no more saints, amen. It ain't your time to go see St. Nobody. So you just stay here, your heart's fine. You believe that? I believe it, amen. So John 17, 17 says this. You know he laid his life down. The truth shall make you what? John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is what? Is it not? Is it not true? All right. All right. If, if it's, it's not, let me say this. It's not only the, just carrying a Bible under your arm and saying who you are. It's not, it, it's not only the word you know, the follow that makes you, and you follow that makes you free, right? You can carry your Bible. You can put it on your desk. You can do all this kind of stuff. But here, here's the thing, Miss Andrew. Until we get the Bible and we get it in our heart, it ain't going to do no good, right? You can, have the, you can quote How many of y'all know people who quote scriptures live like hell? I do. I, do. I know a lot of them. And, and so you, it ain't about that. It's about what you apply to your heart. It's about who you know you are in Christ, right? So you put it in your heart. And when you do put it in your heart, instead of putting it under your arm, you know, it'll start doing you good. So you got to, we talk about this all the time, right? You hear Pastor Chris say, Br- Bruton says it, Norval says it. Uh, Ms. Zona says you got to meditate on his word. You meditate on the word, on his word. Everybody say his word. How long do I meditate? Till you get it. Till you know it. Till you live it. How long do I got to meditate? How long do I got to go to IBTC? Till I get it. How long do I got to study and meditate? Till I understand it. Till I know who I am in Christ. Till I know that he died for me. Not that I only live life in heaven, but I can live life abundantly here. Enjoy my wife. Enjoy my children. Enjoy my church. Enjoy my relationship. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy the bluebirds. Enjoy the things I see in this earth. That's why he came. Once you believe it, to the point of taking action. I can preach this to him blue in my face. You can say, well, that was a terrible message. I think it's a great message. Once you take it today and you get the point of it, amen, and it becomes a part of you and you start taking action, I can tell you all this week, I want you to grind in. And you older people, that means dig in, whatever, I don't care. You dig in to this fast. And you've been doing two weeks and you don't coast it through two weeks. And if it was easy for those two weeks, then you ain't doing enough. Because it ain't easy. I'm going to tell you, you think it was easy for Jesus to go 40 days and 40 nights? No, it was tough. So it won't do any good. It won't do any good until you meditate on it. It becomes a part of you. And once you believe it, you got to take action. And when you do this, you're going to know the word, and you'll know him more intimately. Is that right? How many of you, since you started coming here, know the word more intimately? Some of y'all are smarter than I am, but I've learned a lot in 10 years. How many of you know that we're about to celebrate our 10th anniversary here? Wow, that's an accomplishment. You know what I mean? Start out in the storefront, start in the kitty corner, and then here we are. We believe God through ups and downs all around. There's not many of the original 40 still here. It's okay. Everybody says, okay. We're still here, right? When we understand this knowledge and we act on this knowledge, then according to the Bible, this knowledge will set me free. No matter what you've done, where you've been, where you're going, it'll set you free. You believe that? I, I, I totally believe that. I believe that I, I am backed by the whole kingdom of heaven, and there ain't nothing that can stop me. Amen. You say, well, you, that's haughtiness. You just being, that's pride. No, it ain't. If you know who you are in Christ, then we would be, man, we'd see the resurrection power of Jesus in this place. Every day. You would come in here, we wouldn't be able to contain it. Now, I was going to the restroom with the two guys. while They were, they were following me while I go, and, and, and Doug was, like, shouting all the way down the hall. That's somebody has got in a you know, intimate relationship with God, amen, because he don't care. I'm going to the restroom, man. He's praising God. Man, fire, fire. All I heard was, he was saying, fire, man, power, power, fire. You know, that's intimacy because three years ago he wouldn't have done that. He would have laughed at this stuff. But who are you becoming? You've had, you, oh, I've had troubles. Okay, so have I. So did Jesus have troubles? Did he get made fun of? Did people try to kill him all, everywhere he went? They try to take him everywhere he went? They make fun of him? Yeah. Yeah, everywhere he went. You know when Jesus told something, and people take this the wrong way, Jesus said, keep my commandments. 
know what he was talking about? He would say, keep what I'm teaching. Keep my command. Amen. Do what I do. Say what I say. Cast out devils, heal the sick. That's what he said. Go read on my wall in there. Matthew 28, 19. Once you discover who you are, you're going this fast. You got counterfeit devils, you got counterfeit gods trying to stop you. You know, oh, do this. You know. You know, they're gonna hurt you to do that. Don't pray today. Don't do this today. Oh, what's the use? He's just trying to get your money. If that's what you think, boy, you're in a bad in a bad place. I see. I Pastor Chris said this a long time ago to me, and, and Brother Norville reiterated it when the pool that night. He said, Bishop, he said, you're gonna see things six months to a year ahead of your congregation. And he said, the problem is most of the time, before they catch up, you don't forget about it. I thought that's so true. He said, hold on to your destiny. Speak the vision, write it down plainly, and then move on. I'm telling you as the leader of this house to push down these next seven days. And it's going to be tough. I believe it will be tough if you really do it. But you're going to, get in, you're going to develop an intimate relationship with God. By Wednesday night, you're going to want some, pop, you're going to want some pumping up. So you come here Wednesday night, we're going to blow this place apart. Have communion. I think it's going to be amazing. Amazing. You're going to come back Sunday morning. We're going to lease you at the end of Sunday morning service, and this is going to be an amazing year for us. Amen. Stay in your feet. Get ready. I'm done. I pray today that you found something that would encourage you and to really make you understand who you are in Christ and make you understand what this fast is all about. And it's really about getting intimate with him. And I'll tell you, through getting intimate with him, you're going to get intimate with other people. You're going to start finding how much you love people, how much you trust people. And how much God has blessed in your life, how, how, that, how that what you give and what you do is for the pleasure of this earth. They begin to enjoy what God is doing in our life. And let's stay focused on who we are. We've got troubles, yeah. We've got things, we got, we got decisions that everybody's got to make in their life this week. And, but you know what? If you grind in this week like you never have, I promise you this. God will give you an answer. Now, you may not be the one you want to hear. It may not be what you want to do. But God's got an answer for you. Because let me tell you. If I go ask my wife for anything today, she loves me. And she's going to do everything in her power to give it. Same vice versa with me. The father said, if my son come ask for a fish, would I give him a rock? Of course not. Give him the very best. So you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you don't really believe it. I'm telling you right now, get into a place where you believe. Take your faith back by the kingdom of God, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, and apply it to that intimate relationship. You'll start seeing things work in your life. Know Him. Love Him. 